Hello friends, welcome back to Trustract. In this video, we are going to solve the second example on energy and power signals. In the first part, we discussed about some tricks or shortcuts on how to easily know if a signal is an energy or a power signal. And also we solve an example to see the step-by-step -step way of solving uh, for a signal to know if it is actually an energy or power signal. So now, we are going to solve the second example problem, right? which is this. And um, it all starts this way. The question says what? X of t equal to 4 sine 2 pi t, right? Minus, um, it says x of t equal to 4 sine 2 pi t. Very limit. Now, if we could recall, the part of steps in solving it is discovered in the last part of the first part of the video. But we're going to iterate over it now. The first thing we need to do is that after you are given the signal x of t, Right, we need to make sure that as a solution after we're giving the signal x of t, right? The next thing we need to do is to find the absolute value of the signal x of t. Are they being let's say this is minus four? When we would find the absolute value of it, right? That should definitely give us positive because we know absolute, so it isn't going to change, right? The absolute value will always make things to be positive. So which means if there is negative 4, we will have positive 4. So whenever there is negative sign, it turns it to positive. That's it. So the next thing we need to do is that we need to square the value of this absolute value. So we say, okay, we have um, 4, right? Sine 2 pi t, right? Which is the output. Then we square it, right? So let's solve for it. So we end up having 4 squared and sine squared 2 pi t, right? Which means sine 2 pi t squared and 4 squared. So this end up giving us what? The square of this value will be what? 16 sine squared 2 pi t, right? So after we find the square, the next thing we need to do is to what? Take the integral, right? So we need to take the integral. So this is... 1, 2, right, which is same as this, then we are now here. So we need to take the integral from negative t to t, right, of x of t, right, squared dt, which is same as what, negative t, right, which is same as negative t to t, right, of 16 sine squared 2 pi t. Never forget the dt whenever you have integration. So, what we need to do next is that after we are done doing this, we need to take the limit. Right? But before taking the limit, let's solve for the integral. So, it may be easier for us to find the energy part and the power part. So, the first thing we need to do is that we can bring the 16 out. So, we end up having 16. Get up from negative t to t sine squared 2 pi t dt. Now, we call that. Whenever we have sine squared theta, and if we are to integrate this, right, we have to convert this to 1 minus cos 2 theta over 2. Meaning that this theta here is 2 pi t. Therefore, theta is equal to 2 pi t. So we can convert sine squared theta into this, which is going to give us 1 minus cos. So the theta is what? 2 pi t divided by 2, right? So this is going to give us what? 1 minus cos 4 pi t divided by 2. So we need to substitute it now. So we we'll see what? 16 integral from negative t to t. 1 minus cos what? 4 pi t over 2 dt. So we can bring these two out, right? So we see that what? 16 divided by 2 from negative t to t, right? 1 minus cos all pi t dt so 16 by 2 is 8 right so we have 8 from negative t to t 1 minus cos 4 pi t dt so we can take this integration now so we can say 8 put in big bracket the integral of 1 will give us t right and the integration of course now before doing the integration of course let me show you some kind of simple trick because whenever you are solving some complex problem you have to start thinking of finding some trigonometric table something like that all you just need to do here is 
you write down sign, negative sign. Because you know sign is always on right axis. Then we have cops, negative cops. So we have something like this. This is the y axis. This is the x. So the x axis is always the cos part. The y axis is the sine part. So if the arrow goes like this, it means that you are doing differentiation, right? So if you differentiate sine of anything, it is going to give you cos. But if you take the arrow back like this, it is integration, right? Meaning the sine, then differential of sine will give you cos. Now the integral of cos will give you sine. So in this case, we are having the integration of course. So we say t minus the integral of course going back, we give off sine. So we write sine 4 pi t, right? Now we have to divide by something because that is integration. Divide by what? What is the differentiation of what is in between here? The differentiation of 4 pi t is going to give us 4 pi. Now we'll take the limit from negative t to what? To t bracket, right? So the next thing we need to do here is that we say even before proceeding, we know for sure, right? Or well, let's just conclude it this way. Let's see now the integral, which is this part of the equation at the top, right? From negative t to t, what? x of t squared dt is equal to 8 open bracket t minus sine 4 pi t divided by 4 pi from negative t to t, right? So this is equal to this. Now, there is something about the formula of, um, there is something about the formula. So here it is, we see it from the steps we discussed in the last section on the steps on how to solve energy of power signal. We say when you are given the signal, we already did this step. We say find the absolute value, then you square it, then you take the integral. After you are done taking the integral, whenever you take the limit as t tends to infinity, we get the energy. So we are close, we are one step closer what, to finding what? The energy, which means since we got this integral, right? The energy, all we just need to do is take the limit. Which means to we'll substitute whatever we have t to be worth infinity. Now there's something I want you to do. Instead of having to waste time in solving the problem so long, remember that if you substitute this cap, this is small letter t, right? If you substitute after substituting this capital letter t, we end up having both sine four pi capital T. And this t ends up becoming infinity, right? Whatever here it is times infinity is infinity, and sine infinity is equal to zero. Likewise, cos infinity is equal to zero. So you see, there is no need of doing this calculation. So by this point, we have to neglect it from the word equation. So here's what we need to do. What we need to do here is that from this equation, we need to say that what? Energy is equal to the limit, right? As t tends to infinity, right? 8 t minus sine. 4 pi t over 4 pi from negative t to t. So since we know that whenever we substitute, we open the bracket, we substitute t and we take the limit, it is going to give us zero. So let's just remove it from the equation. So it simplifies it for us. So e now becomes what? The limit as t tends to what? Infinity. Right? 8 open bracket t. Take the limit from negative t to t, which means we end up having the limit as t tends to what? Infinity. 8, open bracket, capital T, minus, then minus, small letter T. So in this case, what we end up having is what? The limit as T tends to infinity, 8 times T, right? So minus times minus becomes plus, then T. So we have 8, remember there is the limit as T tends to what? Infinity, open bracket, 2T. That becomes what? The limit as t tends to what infinity of 16 t. So energy is equal to when we substitute t to be infinity, we have 16 times infinity, which is what infinity. Therefore, energy e is equal to infinity. Let's do for the power. The power says that all you just need to do is that if you have the integral, which is same as this, instead of taking the limit direct as we did for the energy, all we just need to do is that we need to what? Divide the integration by 2t. 
then we now take the limit. So which means power is equal to what? So instead of saying limit direct, we just say what? The limit t is the 1 over 2t. Then now we pass it t, right? Negative t to t. You get the point? So now we'll proceed by saying what? Well, we we'll take the limit as t tends to what? Infinity. 1 over 2t, right? This becomes what? Well, remember, this is 2t, right? So we said limit as t tends to what? Infinity. 1 over 2t times what? 16t. This becomes what? The limit as t tends to what? Infinity. T cancel t. We have 16 by 2, which is equal to the limit as t tends to what? Infinity of 8. So since this is 8, which is constant, we, tank, we can't take the limit. Definitely power is equal to what? A value, which is constant. So if at the end of the day, we end up having this signal, energy is infinity, but power is what? Is 8, meaning it is what? Finite. So in this case, we have a table that is, we have a table that discusses it. So here it is, when it is energy, right? So there must be finite energy, zero power. We saw that the first example in the first tutorial, we did that. But in this case, we end up having what? Energy to be what? Infinity. In this case, we have um, energy to be what? To be infinity, power to be finite, which is having a value of it. And therefore, x of t equal to what force sign which is the question the signal we've been given is said to be a power signal right so the first part for example we solve an energy signal now we are solving for what power signal prior before that we know with the shortcut trick that this is what a power signal but we just wanted to solve it because we already know that if we focus on this this is a constant so from the trick we discussed this is a power signal so now we solved it and it is being proven. The next example I'm going to be discussing, which will be the third part, will be a signal that is neither with energy nor power. But I shouldn't have told you tell you this because I want us to solve it as. But since you hear that, then wait for the next.